Hey, hey, John Hope Bryant, uh, founder of Operation Hope, with my friend Nadim, who's driving today. Uh, he owns his own business here in Manhattan. So, um, I've talked about the power of credit scores over and over again. We have now a Operation Hope credit, credit Score Index. It's called the Hope Community Credit Score Index. Do a search for it. Put your own in, uh, credit score in. Um, it's also called the Hope Financial Wellness Index. If you want to search under that, under that or just go to our website. But I've talked about how powerful these credit scores are, uh, and maybe it didn't make any sense to you. But there's a CNBC article out today that shows that the, the, the states with the 10 lowest credit scores, I want to read these to you and explain to you why they're the lowest and the problems they're having. Number one lowest, Mississippi. Basically, everybody in Mississippi, you know, has a 600 credit score. Not everybody, but that's the norm. Um, you can't get anything, you can't get any good credit. You can't get a good loan, can't get a good mortgage, you can't start a business, you can't do anything with a 600 credit score. And your economic energy is going to be very low. Your, basically, your optimism, your belief, your engagement, your, you know, all the stuff that you need, uh, your, your hootspot, if you want to call it that, the energy to go start a business or become a wealth creator is gone uh, at, six, at 580, 600 credit score. You're actually in a surviving mindset, maybe even depressed. Uh, so, number one, Mississippi, 662 credit score. Number two, Louisiana, 668 credit score. Uh, three, Alabama, 672 credit score. Arkansas, 673 credit score. Oklahoma, 673 credit score. Texas, 674 credit score. There's two outliers here, which I'm going to explain to you when I get finished. Number uh, seven, Georgia, 675 credit score. Um, number eight, West Virginia, 676 credit score. Kentucky, 678 credit score. South Carolina, 678 credit score. So uh, those are the lowest credit scores states in America. The two outliers that should jump out at you immediately are Texas and Georgia. Uh, why is that credit score so low even though they do economically pretty well at states? Because they're saved by places with high economic energy who get free enterprise economics ownership, who, who, who at least for the purpose of business purposes put race aside. Um, Texas has Dallas and Houston. Anybody say it's Dallas or Houston, you can think about people of color in those places who are doing really well. It's a place that welcomes you in. Those cities, there are other cities, by the way, Austin, other cities in uh, in Texas that that are subscribed here. But their politics are all screwed up. They have a message of exclusion. Um, they don't really celebrate diversity, generally speaking, uh, or what you might call, I guess, progressive ideas. So as a state, they're they're suffering overall because the masses are listening to this craziness, even though the classes are <laughs> ignoring the political rhetoric and moving on the things that make good business sense. Georgia is another outlier, and of course I live in Atlanta, I grew up in LA, but I live now in Atlanta. Georgia is, is saved basically by Greater Atlanta, the seven counties of Greater Atlanta, uh, because they embrace diversity, they, they embrace inclusion. Uh, the color is green. It's not white, black, red, brown, or yellow. It's green. You take, if you take Georgia outside of, you take Atlanta outside of Georgia, and then Georgia's poorer than Mississippi. You follow that? I'll say it again. Take Georgia, take Atlanta, Great Atlanta, outside of the state of Georgia. Georgia's poorer than the state of Mississippi. Let me put it another way. Take the city of Atlanta and compare it to the state of Mississippi combined with the state of, of Alabama, combined with the state of West Virginia, combined economically, and Atlanta is still larger. Atlanta, the city, is the 10th largest economy in the entire United States. And it's, it's a city built on diversity and inclusion, the city that Andrew Young built as an international city, the city that Maynard Young built as a minority inclusion city, um, the city that civil rights built as a, as a moral capital of America city. Um, it's, it's proven in Atlanta you can do well and do good at the same time. Um, you look at places that um, celebrate diversity and inclusion. I'm in New York right now. New York and California. Uh, New York and L.A., let's speak, make it really simple. Uh, they're doing very well, right? Uh, you look at the South Coast, the diversity, the city that's most diverse in, this, in the southern states, Atlanta, 10th largest economy in the U.S. Um, diversity and inclusion wins. Those, wherever you find a diverse and inclusive culture or economy or region, they're going to succeed. So this is a short take, really quick on credit scores and power of them. Um, if you, by the way, fi see a 500 credit score neighborhood, whether it's white and poor and rural, by the way, they're rallying, they're rallying, riot, riding at the ballot box.
dogs, following a guy who doesn't even want to have dinner with them, following a guy who doesn't want to stay in their house, following a guy who doesn't want to be their friend. But they're angry because society has forgotten about poor, white, struggling families. So, but anger is not a strategy, right? So those are 500 credit score neighborhoods, black and brown urban neighborhoods. Uh, um, uh, uh, if you find a 500 credit score neighborhood, they they really operate under a lot of the same terms as those white rural neighborhoods I talked to you about that are poor and struggling. They've got depression levels, they've got low education levels, they have a high unemployment levels, they have uh, they have um, high levels of crime, and uh, these are not moral statements I'm making. I'm just simply saying that when you when you have low economic energy, and low optimism, and low hope, it invites all bad things. And by the way. Here's some bad things you find in white rural neighborhoods that are poor and black and brown urban neighborhoods that are also struggling and poor. A check casher next to a payday loan lender, next to a rent to own store, next to a title lender, next to a liquor store, next to a pawn shop. You fill the rest in. And they're preying on folks with a low credit score and, uh, low, and, and high levels of depression uh, and low levels of hope. So go see Operation Hope today. All services are free. We have offices in 200 cities now helping you take your life back. We just opened our 200th location about four weeks ago. We're on the move. We are America's financial coach. We're the private banker for the underserved. We are your friend. We're your partner. And this is the civil rights movement in the suites. The last movement was civil rights in the streets. Love and light.